Let's face it, self-driving cars are about to hit the streets real soon. But especially driving in big cities is very challenging. Can autonomous systems really handle that kind of chaos? How safe are they? Could it be wiser to entrust my life to an autonomous car than believing in the skills of an Uber driver? Who is the better driver, man or machine? Most experts agree that in the future, autonomous systems will be much safer. Okay, but why exactly? And how do autonomous cars work? That's what we asked scientists at Berlin's Fraunhofer Institute for Open Communication Systems. In short, FOCUS. A fitting acronym, as FOCUS is what really matters in traffic. Dr. Ilya Radosh is Director of Business Unit Smart Mobility at FOCUS. He gave us the chance to see firsthand how an autonomous car works. And in this case, a very fancy one as well. The people at Focus equipped this sedan to be able to drive autonomously, with the aim of gathering training data for autonomous driving systems. In spite of COVID-19 restrictions, Dr. Radosh let us have a look into the brain of a self-driving car. Dr. Radosh, thank you so much for having us. If you had to answer in one word, who is the better driver, man or machine? Now the man, later the machine. What could be the advantages of autonomous systems uh, of a, a human driver. The human driver can get tired and he can get distracted uh, by anything outside or inside the car. And the good thing already now is that the machine is never sleeping, is never getting tired, is never getting distracted. However, uh, the person, either man or woman, is usually better in um, perception, in recognizing things. You're talking about perception. I think seeing, obviously, is the, the most important sense when you're in traffic. How does uh, an autonomous car do it? Could you show us what kind of technology is needed? Indeed, I can show you that. Uh, camera is the most obvious. Additional tool camera, a LiDAR system that we see up there. Uh, oh, that's, the, that's the LiDAR system. That's here. the LiDAR system and it's um, generating 3D model, 3D points uh, by rotating. The LiDAR system can see all around all the time. LiDAR is an acronym for Light Detection and Ranging. Very simply put, it's a technology that uses laser light to measure distances. In autonomous cars, LiDAR is used to create 3D models of the car's current surroundings. Many developers of self-driving cars rely on the technology, with one prominent exception, Tesla's Elon Musk. But more on that later. How, how far does it see? It kind of depends on the LiDAR system itself, uh, but usually it's about 200, 250 meters. Uh, but it's also the, the more closer stuff that we are looking at. There's radar used as well. Where would the radar normally be? So the, in the radar car. is like in a normal car, it would be uh, in, in front of here. And then for autonomous driving, of course, we have some more radars uh, in the back. Radar is an acronym for radio detection and ranging. While it is already used in cars for so-called autonomous driving assistance systems, many experts doubt the technology is accurate enough for fully autonomous cars. The camera, where is that one? We have, of course, the, the obvious camera from the serial system, but then we have, uh, in our system, we have a lot of more cameras, as you can see here. All these small uh, bubbles, so to say, those are all cameras. And here we also get a kind of a 360 degree uh, surround view. The cameras are using image recognition software to identify their surroundings. But more on that later. I already identified two big advantages an autonomous car has over me. It has a 360 degree view, it also never gets tired. Tesla CEO Elon Musk once said, I think it was in 2019, anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. Mm. What do you say to that? <laughs> it's, a, it's a big question. If you want to be really sure that uh, everything is uh, as it's, uh, you, you think it is, uh, we need an additional third sensor and that's a LiDAR system. If just one of those other sensors is actually malfunctioning, we still have two, two sensors to make sure that we are not driving over someone. And this is something that indeed uh, we see as a requirement we give ourselves. If someone else is not uh, that keen on, on safety, uh, they can do whatever they want. <laughs> so relying on three different sensors really makes sense to me because uh, what happens if those cameras, for example, get dirty? Indeed, or if you have fog or heavy rain or something, radar and LiDAR system usually can penetrate fog. And so this is something where the camera is, is not really working and we can still drive autonomously. An autonomous car even sees in the fog, which I can't, so 
That's big advantage number three. I'm really intrigued with the LiDAR technology. What does that look like? Kishan Sharma is a scientist at Business Unit Smart Mobility at Focus. He shows us what the car actually sees. So if I walked in front of the car here, then I'd see it on the computer. Yeah. I want to see it as well. Uh, Kilian, uh, Kilian is um, the cameraman. Could you please walk? Ah, okay, I see. Yeah, I see, see I see him now. I see him walking there. That's really a 360 degree view. What, what does the green color mean and what does red mean? The green color here represents the free space where the car can freely move. And the red color here representing the objects and the obstruction. So it is telling the car that uh, it shouldn't move there. Uh, even if it's n never seen the different scenarios before, it can still uh, see and get the information from the LiDAR and uh, plan, the, plan its motion ahead. If there's a hole in the ground, would the LiDAR see that as well? Yeah, the LiDAR has, it has 10 degree of uh, field of view in the up direction and the 30 degree of view in the downward direction. So it can see if there is a hole or pothole in the road. How do you teach the car what the red parts are? How does it know it's a human or this is a bike? For this we use AI-based self-learning algorithm which consists of millions of parameters to detect the other traffic participants. And from this it creates a dynamic picture of the surrounding environment. But can the system keep on learning? Uh, for driving our brain requires experience yeah. but similarly this AI based learning algorithm needs training data, a lot of training data and from this it uh, gains experience of hours of driving on the road. An autonomous car can actually learn from experience. I thought this was a thing that only humans can. Really amazing stuff. Another big plus of autonomous cars for me, autonomous parking. I still don't understand exactly how autonomous cars recognize the objects around them. Bernd Schäufele is senior scientist at Business Unit Smart Mobility at Focus. He'll tell us. Also, wir haben LIDAR, wir haben ein Radar, wir haben verschiedene Kameras. Wie kommen denn diese ganzen Daten zusammen? Wie sieht denn das Gehirn von einem autonomen Auto aus? Ja, dazu schauen wir mal in den Kofferraum. Wir haben hier sehr viel Technik drin. Wir haben hier mehrere Computer, die alle sehr starke Grafikkarten haben. Diese Grafikkarten nutzen wir, um die Daten auszuwerten. Wir werten einmal die Kamerabilder aus, wir werten die LIDAR-Daten aus und fusionieren das alles zusammen zu einem sogenannten Umfeldmodell. Wie kann man das dem Auto beibringen, falls es was nicht erkennt? Das Auto und die Computer brauchen ganz viele Daten, die schon gelabelt sind. Das heißt, wo das Auto weiß, okay, das ist ein Auto auf dem Bild und da ist auch ein Auto quasi als Text dazu. Also einfach Bilderkennung, genau. ganz grob genommen, wie mein Google-Handy erkennt, das ist ein Hund, der erkennt das Auto auch, das ist ein Straßenschild, das ist ein Baum. Genau. Und äh, für Kamerabilder gibt es da schon ganz viele Daten, aber der LIDAR ist eben noch eine relativ neue Technologie und deswegen gibt es da noch nicht so viele Daten, die man zum Trainieren benutzen kann. Und wir haben mit unserem Tool äh, etwas entwickelt, womit wir Kamera- und LIDAR-Daten gleichzeitig aufzeichnen können und dann erkennen wir in den äh, Kamerabildern, was das für ein Objekt ist und können das dann auf die LIDAR-Punkte übertragen und generieren somit auch neue Trainingsdaten für die LIDAR-Technologie. Das heißt, Sie fahren mit dem Auto durch die Stadt, nehmen die Sachen auf, schauen, wie akkurat das die Sachen wahrgenommen hat über LIDAR und verknüpfen dann eventuell Daten, damit es das beim nächsten Mal noch besser erkennt. Dann können wir uns das mal kurz angucken, wie das ungefähr aussieht? Man hat hier links äh, eine Straßenszene und hat parallel dazu rechts eine 3D-Ansicht von dem LIDAR-Bild. Ähm, wenn man zum Beispiel hier sieht, hier vorne ist der Baum, den kann man hier auch in der 3D-Ansicht hier erkennen. Das ist der gleiche Baum und hier sieht man, ähm, dass äh, der als Baum erkannt wurde. Und wenn ich jetzt aber hier eine Person hätte, dann könnte ich die auch mit dem Tool als Person labeln. Verstehe. Eine Frage hätte ich aber trotzdem noch. Ich glaube, mein großer Vorteil als Mensch ist, ich habe so eine Art Instinkt. Also ich habe eine Situation, da kann ich gar nicht genau sagen, was da gefährlich ist und fahre dann vorsichtiger. Also so ein Zweifel wäre doch eigentlich ein menschlicher Vorteil oder kann äh, das Auto das auch? Wir rechnen da immer mit Wahrscheinlichkeiten. Also das System erkennt nicht, das ist ein 
Baum oder ein Ball oder ein Fahrrad, sondern es ist zu 90 Prozent ein Ball und zu 10 Prozent könnte es aber auch nur ein Stein sein, der dort liegt. Und je unsicherer diese Wahrscheinlichkeiten sind, umso verhaltener würde sich auch das Auto bewegen. Das heißt, der Zweifel ist eigentlich dann doch auch schon mit eingebaut? Ja, der ist in das System eigentlich schon mit integriert. Not even my instinct is a big advantage I have over the autonomous car. It's really a bit depressing. My impressions from today, autonomous cars will definitely make the better drivers in the future. Are you looking forward to fully autonomous cars? And would you feel comfortable taking your hands off the wheel? Let us know in the comments. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. That's it from me. Take care. Bye bye.